Not that you go abroad and the next thing you start looking for short courts, joining freaking courts. What till they join court for? What would they give you? Like for real, bro. Take away shio, weed, and and pussy. What has court given any of you? Nothing. If 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 not for, if anything, except they are taking from yourself. I beg. Varum, varum, varum. Oh, pa 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 zaddy. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nosu Mokwa, and this is another reaction video. In today's video, I'll be reacting to Tayo Aina. I got denied entry to Dubai for being Nigerian. I haven't even watched the video yet, but I just know that the reason why they stopped us is because there are bad eggs everywhere. Nigerians will go to a particular place and just ruin it for the rest of us here. But it's fine. Let us see why he got denied entry into Dubai. And if you've had any kind of experiences, like real life experience, let me know in the comment section, okay? Let's watch. Do you know that if you are a Nigerian male between the age of 20 to 35 and you apply for a Dubai visa, you probably will be denied. And it's all because of this thing. Hey. Let me backtrack a little bit. Some weeks ago, I was invited. Did you see guys in my... Why will you leave this place and still carry the same mentality there? What did you do with Machete for Dubai? I don't understand. What are you doing with Cutlass in Dubai? Why? For the last summit, which was happening in Dubai, if you watch social media, I'm sure you guys know Nas Daily. He makes a lot of videos about people and places across the world. Guys, I am now on top of the most beautiful building in the world. And this was a very amazing opportunity. I was so excited, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. This was an opportunity for me to, first of all, represent the continent on the world stage. Secondly, it was also an opportunity for me to meet a lot of creators from all over the world out there. Welcome to the first ever Nash I was also going to be a speaker at this event, so this was like top, top level. I wasn't just invited, I was going to speak in front of everybody. Yeah, you can imagine I was gingered, ready to go, and then I applied for a Dubai visa. I've been to Dubai before, I was in Dubai in 2019, just before the pandemic, and then the visa came out within a day. But now, I was told that the visa was going to take three days, which wasn't a problem for me because I still had like a week before the actual event was going to take place. So three days wasn't so bad, or so I thought. Only for three days to pass, and then I got denied for a Dubai visa. It's Dubai we are talking about. Dubai is a place that a lot of Nigerians go to. It's also a place that I've been to before. I've made videos in Dubai before on this channel. When I was in Dubai, there was no issue, nothing. So I was wondering, why would I be denied for a Dubai visa? Like, that's like the easiest place to travel to across the world because it's the number one tourism center of mm -hmm. the world, or tourism country of the world. And this is where the problem started. So spoke to the agent, then they started telling me about the fact that Dubai has been denied a lot of Nigerian males between the age of 35 to 20. And in my head, I was wondering, that why what's the reason why and then he showed me this clip so this clip that you're looking at is a clip of autists in dubai who went to canada arrive our courtist and then i think there were some deaths cultist I'm going to tell you people my own cultism story when I'm in in another video but I won't tell it in this one. <laughs> do you see? Do you see the the sheer number of people just trooping in just to go and attack one person? That's why. I, that's why I don't. I I don't rate any of those guys. Like you need to be in a group to feel strong. You need to be in a mob to feel powerful. Everything will carry you. Like why? Your nonsense is not, is not in Nigeria. You want to carry to Dubai. And you think that there will not be any consequences or it will not affect hard-working, good-working people here in, in Nigeria that is trying to look for a way. Do you know, like, I got I got offered, a friend of mine that works in, currently works in Dubai right now, got, told me that, yo, there was this job opportunity, like, he needed me to come over, let's do, and this was around this, like, uh, late last year or early this year, I don't remember, but, like, all of a sudden he told me yo he doesn't know what's going on the things are happening that they are not letting Nigeria, nigerians as much into dubai ashe crazy man crazy i'm sure if you're on social media you've seen this 
social media, he definitely listened to sleep before. And you know, this was a big issue in Dubai when it happened. Which is sad, by the way. I think because of this reason, there has been a lot of backlash on the Nigerian community. Anyway, more on that later. After being denied after the first three days, I reached out to the NAS Summit, the people who were organizing the event. If they could, you know, link me up with anybody who could be like a company there. Because the first time I was trying from Nigeria, so I said, let me try from there. Maybe it's easier. So I tried again, I applied again. And I applied from there this time, and from a Dubai company. And after two days or three days, I got denied again. This is the second denial. In my mind, I was like, this is an event that I would I would never want to miss because this is a great opportunity to meet a lot of creators. This is a great opportunity to you know, represent the country, represent the continent. This is a great opportunity to share our story, our narrative with a lot of people out there who don't know enough about us. But this is me here being stopped from getting access to this place just because of a stereotype or just because of a preconceived notion of what Nigerians may be. I was kind of losing hope already, my spirit was defeated, I was just very tired with the whole process and also I had already spent a lot of money because even these visas, they were so expensive. Yeah, they are not cheap. Time. You have to have pay like almost twice the amount of money I was paying last time and I paid twice already and I got denied. So, as somebody who doesn't like to give up, I said, let me try one more <laughs> time and see what happens. I still have like two days. At least, if the event passes, then I know there was no point trying again. But if there was still a, a slight opportunity, no matter how slim the opportunity was, that I could still get this, let me try one more time. So I tried. You got another agent who, like, I applied to, and I just kept on waiting. You know, the first day passed, I was waiting. Second day passed, I was waiting. Then the event was going to start the next day. And I just kept waiting, you know, buzzing the agent, what's happening, is he out yet, let me know my fate. Because I didn't done anything, I didn't book flight, I didn't even book hotel, I wasn't even sure at all. I just prayed and slept and just left everything to God, that okay, whatever happens, happens. Finally, the next morning I woke up, I checked my mail and <laughs> I yeah. got the visa. That was the morning of the event, but I got the visa. I was very excited, but I was also sad on the other side because the first day was the day Casey Neistat was going to speak. No, Casey. Casey Neistat was, it's one of the main reasons I wanted to come down here. Casey Neistat is like the father of vlogging. He's the main person who inspired me to start making YouTube videos. So I wanted to at least get an opportunity to see him physically one on one. And that was the day he was going to speak. But oh well, you know, in life, you always have to look at the cup as half full and half empty. I mean, I got an opportunity to go. Uh, bought flight ticket that same day, direct flight Emirates to Dubai. I also booked a hotel. So I was just doing last minute, last minute rush. And eventually got on the plane all the way to Dubai, seven hours. And they were landed in Dubai the next day. Next day, joined them day two. It was an amazing event. It was really amazing. Like it was even more amazing than I imagined it. Met with a lot of creators from across the world. Yes Theory, Project Nightfall. I also met with mm. my friends, with Maya, nice. Kambi, a lot of other African creators too, who were also there. And it was just like a mixture of all creators from all over the world. And you know, talking, sharing ideas, learning so much. I learned so much just from just from those two minutes to this. So much. Like I'm still going back to my notes to even check, but there, there was so much knowledge, so much information, so many ways a lot. I think the whole the whole thing about and I don't, I don't, I don't know how many of my viewers right now have have lived abroad, but Nigerians, we need to do better. We need to do better. Nigerians go abroad and they completely lose all home training. We Nigerians are probably the most banned country everywhere it, that is not involved in like terrorism or whatever because almost everywhere you go to, they're like no Nigerians, no Nigerians. Your passport is almost. Our passport is basically useless at this point because there are places we can't or we are not allowed to enter because we are troublemakers everywhere. A lot of us have this mentality that, you know, whatever we are doing is just for us, especially when we are abroad. But it's not. You are affecting lives. A lot of people behind you. Like, when... Quick story. When I finished school and I started working, a lot of people did not believe I got a job in the Philippines. When we met up at the embassy... And I was trying to tell the consulate at that point that I needed this so-and-so letter to process my working visa. 
the man thought I was lying because it was like walking, like basically in front of everybody, it was like that's how some people be lying that they got a job. I had to bring out my walking letter and show this guy, like, yo, I get it. A lot of people come here and they are stupid and they do a lot of things, but like, it's not every everybody. That is that the guy was shocked and he was looking at me like, how did you pull it off? I said, I just wanted it. And after me, because I was the first person to get a first african or black person to get a scholarship playing basketball in my school and because after me a few other guys joined in and then i was that's what in my was in my head like yo if i if i'm able to get a job an actual legit job and people could see that i can do it like it will be able to you know everybody will aspire to do something good not that you go abroad and next thing you start looking for shortcuts joining freaking cults, what did they join cult for? What would they give you? Like for real, but take away shio, weed, and, and pussy. What has cult given any of you? Nothing. If 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 not for, if anything except they're taking from yourself. I beg. across the world, uh, you know, building companies off what they do. And it just opened my mind and expanded my mind to a lot of this. This is something I would have missed out on just because of the stereotype that countries have about Nigeria. Finally, I got the chance to, you know, climb on stage alongside a lot of other bigger, even more successful creators than I am from all over the world. And then I talked on stage, which was like, which was amazing. There's so much happening. And what even inspired me and kept pushing me to make more content was when I realized that these stories were resonating with a lot of people across the world. I'm always very afraid of public speaking, but I think these days I'm getting more confident and I'm getting more opportunities to talk on stage. And I actually sat on stage and spoke on stage in front of everybody. That's a big stage, <laughs> which was pretty amazing. Um, what is the real problem? And this is something I just want to highlight quickly. I think the first problem is the people, you know, some bad eggs, some of the Nigerians who, you know, go out there and cause all these problems. You know, why would you leave your country and go to another person's country? Do you get certain issues or be engaging in crimes or courtesy? It doesn't even make any sense. It doesn't. If you leave your country and go to another person's country, you should be on your best behavior. Because Every time we're outside as Nigerians, we are representations of the whole of Nigeria. If one Nigerian does something bad outside, it's like the, it's entire the whole Nigeria. of Nigeria. I know our image, we have a lot of bad PR already. And if you're going out there and you're making it worse, then you're just causing a lot more problems for a lot of Nigerians. So that's one problem. Secondly, I feel like Nigerians are not the only ones who go out there and do bad stuff. Like, we can't be the baddest people on X. Why are we the ones always being stereotyped every single time? We're stereotyped outside Africa, we're also stereotyped inside Africa too. Um, it gets really tiring and really frustrating. I don't know why uh, you know the, that happened, and I don't know why Dubai is also looking at Nigeria this way. I even heard currently from a lot of people on the ground who work in Dubai. I heard it has been really difficult for a lot of people to get work permits as Nigerians in Dubai. I don't know why that is happening, but a lot of people complained to me. Even some people reached out to me at the event and said, okay, this was what was happening. So yeah, I don't know why that is. If you're a Nigerian who lives in Dubai, please share your experience in the description below. Let us know, let's shine more light on this. Let's have this discussion. Why are we being stereotyped? I know some Nigerians go out there and do bad stuff, but you can't just use the sins of a couple thousand people to judge a country of over 200 million people like me. Any country I go to, I'm just trying to you know, tell stories, tell great positive stories. Why do I have to bear the sins of somebody else that I don't even know? And why does the country have to look down on me or look at me a certain way just because somebody else that I don't know from my country did something? This is where I'm going to end the video. If you want to watch more, if you want to finish the video, go to Tyre Ayana's channel. I'll leave the description, you know, the link in the description below. Uh, because obviously, it's not my content, but I enjoy watching his videos because he really tries to tell positive stories about, bruh, even the worst places. But that's just his genius, and that's why he's very successful on YouTube. My whole thing, again, is if you ever get the chance to go abroad i promise you you're not you're not just yourself you are the entire country everybody's looking at you like whenever you do something bad bro even if it's as, as small as body odor they'll say the entire country smells all nigerians have body odor 
always put your best foot forward is all i'm going to say and i don't i don't i i feel i'm still getting the hang of this reaction i feel like i've spoken or i talked too much in between i promise i'll get better but please leave a like please like please subscribe tell me more videos you want me to react to um some people said i should do a paternity court <clears throat> I've seen a few clips of that. That thing is all wild, and I want to do it with my wife, but right now she's not around. So while I'm here by myself, please tell me what I can react to by myself, and also what I can react to my baby girl. Okay? Thank you so so much for watching. I appreciate all of you guys. I'm almost at 5k. Let's make it happen. Make it happen. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.